Okay, no, it says recording started. All right, uh, Jeff uh, Edelstein, I got that right from Sports Handle. Actually, um, DM me after uh, a Lowell's episode uh, that we had with Captain Jack Andrews and said he had some um, questions about the our topic and maybe he could write get an article out of having a uh, uh, discussion with me. And I thought I need content on my <laughs> YouTube channel because they, they demonetize now if you don't do something like once every month or two. And uh, I do not put enough effort into this channel. I'm like, hey, can we record it? Jeff was kind enough to join me and, I mean, and, and uh, l- let me do that. So he's going to release the article if they end up doing it at some point, And then I'll put this out afterwards. Um, J- Jeff, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, my name is Jeff Edelstein. I work for Sports Handling U.S. Bets covering, uh, you know, all things sports gambling related from, you know, just the industry at large. And I try to have a little fun with it while, while I'm doing it because, um, you know, at the end of the day, this is about the most unserious stuff in the world, right? We're just talking about sports betting. I mean, how much fun is that? Um, but, you know, there's been a lot of, uh, you know, it's been in the news a lot lately, right? You know, so PASPA gets overturned in 2018 and legislatures from New Jersey to Pennsylvania, you know, you know, about 30 odd states now, you know, they're falling all over themselves to legalize sports betting, right? Then a few months ago, New York Times runs an article about how horrible the industry is, and it was kind of a hit piece. And ever since then, uh, now these same legislators who were like so keen to legalize it are now going back to the table, saying, "Well, wait a second, you know, maybe you know we're we're going too far, allowing you know, are, are this stuff aimed at kids? Is it you know, is the advertising too much?" And uh, I heard you talking the other day with a take that I have not heard before. And uh, I'm going to put words in your mouth here, but your take, and correct me if I'm wrong, was basically, fuck them. I think it's a little more nuanced. It's a little more nuanced, fair. But that's, but that's, but I, and I'd like to hear it because you have, I mean, as, as, you know, as your, you know, viewers know, obviously you have a lot of experience, you know, in the political realm as well, how the sausage gets made a little bit. And so I, it, you know, you were talking about there's so many things I do want to touch base on, but basically, but I, I'd love to start with where where you see this industry, the quote problem surrounding it, unquote, and you know what politicians and legislators and you know lobbying groups are doing, and what players should be doing, uh, uh, you know, inst- you know, as what they should be putting forth as like the better solution. It's a lot. But yeah, the is yours. there's a lot of pieces to that. And for people who want to hear more, we did do a lulls on Pete Overzet's channel. If you haven't, for some reason, seen that and you're watching this, you can check that out. There's uh, a lot of kind of moving pieces to that, that whole, that whole idea. Like, like, like one, I think like, like Jack should do or anybody, you know, any you know, player looking into this should do whatever they want. I don't want to tell them what I don't, I don't even want to persuade anyone. I look at it more as like a classroom discussion because I really don't think there's anything we can do it, or there's a very small chance of, of what we should do, but it's just fun to think about how would you do this from my perspective? And like in, 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 at the Capitol, you know, it's really just about winning and losing and political power. And then how do you achieve those, achieve your goal of whatever you're trying to accomplish? Um, Not about like what's right or what's wrong or something like that. And so like the whole, the whole fuck them thing that you mentioned is like, I, I, you know, I just as much as you and everyone else don't want anyone to have some horrible addiction that ruins their life. Right. But why was it, why was sports betting illegal? And then all of a sudden it's not. You know, I, that's a rhetorical question, obviously. Like, why uh, all of a sudden now it's morally enough good to do? Right. Like, so we're only going to, we're going to allow all these people to ruin their lives now. <laughs> well, why? Right. Maybe it wasn't that bad before. Maybe there was a lot of propaganda to begin with for this, this, this whole endeavor. And I like to think, like, if you think about it from now a f- player's level, forget about a player advocate and winning in, at a capital, which is just, hard to do and impossible 
a lot of gamblers um, who I know, uh, you know, and I was a professional poker player before. Now they do DFS. Um, they have a lot of like mental anguish from being a gambler and conf- like a conflict of interest and like, oh, what am I doing? Am I taking advantage of people? Do they, you know, am I only beating guys because they have a problem gambling and they're ruining their kids' lives and I'm part of that and so on and so forth. And I think a lot of that's bullshit. I think you could tell a lot of people who tell you that to fuck themselves. <laughs> um, but it's really just your cog in the entertainment industry. And I bet sports and lose quite a bit. Like this, I'm having people over for March Madness on Friday, and I am a dog. Uh, for sure, I'm going to be a dog. But we like betting on the game, going to the bar, and watching our bet. And it's and it's fun. Even when we lose, sometimes we have fun. Like uh, when we lose every bet, it's not that fun. But if you compare it to like other, other entertainment products, like um, the movies, like you don't like every movie for sure, right? You're not receiving anything tangible, right? It's just this nebulous entertainment industry that we're all in. And you could say something like, "Oh, well, you're competing. You're competing. So therefore, you're taking advantage." of all these people. Well, like how, well, like let's do the movie theater example. Imagine if not only you get to watch the movie, but like one to 2% of you going to win a lot of the money from all the ticket sales. Like, mm-hmm. right? right. If I didn't win that money and like, didn't like the movie, it's not like we aren't clamoring for, for all this. So I don't, I don't like when adults engage in a competition voluntarily, there's no victim here. Right. You could just, let's say instead of DFS or poker, it's chess for money. Right. Then all of a sudden people are like, no, no, that's a noble endeavor to like learn and play for chess for tons of money. And like, or it's like, okay, let's just say the money's coming from advertisers. Mm -hmm. Like, oh no, well now that's okay. Because, you know, Pfizer needs to sell, you know, all this, this, uh, you know, uh, whatever chemicals or whatever to to people, drugs, et cetera, or whatever, who else is advertising Halliburton, let's say. So like, uh, I don't, I don't think it's any less noble than, a lot of jobs that our buddies have working in marketing for some fucking random company or something like that. Right. And the, and the, the way they, they get them is with this propaganda on problem gambling. Mainly there's some other things too, but if you look, this is what I was pointing out on the show, but if you look at the studies, it's not hard. It takes two seconds of Googling. You can go to chat GPD, Google gambling uh, study addictions gambling addiction rates and they do them because it's not new to uh, the world gambling it's just new to america right so england's been around for hundreds of years i don't even know how the, their legal status of it's been around forever and the rates are small and commiserate to like other random things like kleptomania and shopping and process addictions where people get addicted to like buying shoes or legos or all sorts of crazy shit right and um and, I, you know, when I looked that up myself, I'm like, well, this doesn't make sense. You would think it would be like alcohol or right. cigarettes or higher, worse, but it's not even close. There are order, orders of magnitude more addictive in these other industries, um, you know, not to mention, you know, like food and obesity and just all those sorts of other uh, problems that we have um, in the country. And it doesn't justify, back to the state now. This radical, you know, uh, maybe not radical is the right word, but this over overreaching intervention from the state to make the industry a public private partnership, essentially, hmm. w- much like the banks that you see now. And so that's what they use. They need to use this propaganda to 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 have this huge oversight. And then the knowledge I have from working in Springfield that a lot of normal people don't understand is the Mr. Smith goes to Washington ideal is a load of shit, right? <laughs> this doesn't happen. Um, like they're, they, you know, every good crisis, don't let a good crisis go to waste, right? Rahm Emanuel, Winston Churchill, tons of people said this, like they're, they, they want it. They'll use everything they can to put up more borders to their competition and, and make it, you know, more profits for themselves if they can. So this is just an excuse they'll use 
among many to increase their their stranglehold on an already he- heavily overreaching and captured captured market. So like it, it it just makes you feel good to say, oh, we gotta stop this problem gambling. We gotta stop these touts. We gotta stop this X, Y, and Z and X, Y, and Z. Although I don't want anyone getting taken advantage either. Um, you know, no one does. No, 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 um, you know, no, no like reasonable person would be opposed to like would want someone to get addicted to gambling, right? You're not brave. And I and it's bad strategy. And you're and you're 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 messing with the the psyche of a bunch of people I know, including myself. You know what I mean? So why why is it like it, let's let's break it down like very simply? Why is it that the government has like well not only the government why is it that some legislators are sinking their teeth into this you know wanting to ban advertising wanting to limit advertising wanting to you know you know have you know uh, the problem gambling helpline like in you know big bold letters like you know I I read somewhere like every somebody wants like every fourth commercial to be a problem gambling commercial. Why? So why? What? What? What is? What is the? You know? What does the state have to gain here? What does the legislators have to gain here? Well, like each legislator, at least in Illinois, anyways, at the state level, they like all have their specialties. The ones that stick around for a while. Some right. are like the 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 anti cigaretting, anti anti cigarette people. Some of the casino people. I don't even know who's there. I haven't worked there in years. But like Representative Lang uh, was one, and um, and, and another guy who I could tell you a story about off the air. Um, but, um, yeah, they all have like their specialties that they get involved in and then they become kind of like the go-to point person, which is, is good because it, and and not all, not, not all interests are identical for each legislator. So like, you know, you could be opposed to the banks, right. And I could be for, uh, opposed to the sports books, and then there's a different constituencies that we can still get money from, right? And and um, but there there could I mean who uh, who knows? I'd have to be there. I'm not there anymore. But a lot of times it's not what you think, hmm. um, and it's just a useful tool, uh, you know. Or or it, it's just like, um, you know, something you could put on your uh, campaign slogan, right? Um, it's an easy it's an easy thing to attack right now. It feels like. Sure, of course, yeah, anything like that, and and like I said, it's, 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 it's like I, you know they do these studies all the time of like outsized fear on on things, um, like what are your chances of dying from COVID, like during the main you know COVID period, people would say like an outrageous like twenty percent chance of dying from COVID when it first started, right, when it was really you know much 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 lower, and so like I think you did the same thing with gambling problem gambling. It would well people wouldn't think this, this study show 0.7 to like one percent or something like that. They would show like oh 25 percent of the people get addicted right. to it, and so you know they they could they could use that to their benefit. But like I, I that's a really good question of like uh, specifically where do the dots go for that that piece of of like problem gambling? But like it it could also like create jobs. Because you could start a gambling uh, commission to appoint more of your buddies. So, like the way to like the Machiavellian principle of achieving political power is act in a way that helps your allies and hurts your enemies. And so, like you have to build up relationships um, with 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 your allies, which is mainly giving them jobs. Mm-hmm. Like this, is a lot of times, was what what the legislators are doing. They're on the phone like twenty four seven. Like, okay, this guy needs a job here. This guy needs a job here. Hey, can you do me a favor here? And you're doing favors and building uh, uh, building alliances. And so the more jobs you can give out, the better it is. But there's also, like, they think they're doing something good. Right. It's- well, and it's an easy one right now. Because, like, as you said, you know, obviously no one wants anyone to become addicted to gambling, to become a problem gambler. You know, yeah. Just to hold away. Right. right. So it's, it seems like a layup, really. For, for yeah. People. It's, oh, no, I, I disagree. I don't right. need more people addicted to gambling. Right. right. And like I, I, I said to Jack, too, I'll make a bet right now. 
I guarantee they're going to put some more restrictions on it. And these polls, these studies won't change. The same amount of people will be addicted before the, the addition and after the addition. Right. You know, and, and who knows what, like I made a joke, like the, they have the phones, the, the 1-800 gambler phones in the casinos. It's like, that could have been from like the phone lobbyists, like, Oh, <laughs> write this in there too. Right. right. So now these casinos have to install phones. Like they, they, they did it. They do it with like the pipe fitters, like uh, for, for putting in, um, uh, you know, the, the water that sprays from the ceiling. They like did that in, in Chicago. Like, no, no, we got to get this in here. Right. And so, and so, but like, you can't go like, well, no, I want buildings to burn down. Right. right. You can't argue with these, with these things. It, uh, but, yeah, go ahead. But like, I mean, it, it doesn't mean like that some of them don't have good intentions. And here's another uh, like dirty secret is like, they don't know what they're doing. They don't know what they're, they're right. talking about. Like, like even when they pa- like they pass bills for these major ag- agencies, they don't know how the agencies run. They never go to the agencies. Um, they never go to the local branches of these agencies and see how they run. Even the people in the agencies, they're so big. Like the most knowledgeable person doesn't even know everything that's going on there. Right. And so you take away uh, like with these gambling boards, you take away uh, th- there's no institutional knowledge. They hire they're, they're all politically appointed people, you know, because you hire someone who's going to like who, who's almost 100 percent can agree with everything you want. Like right. that's who you point to the board. You don't point to the board, Rufus Peabody, a player advocate. Right, right. He cause problems. Right. right. And you're not even allowed to gamble. So like, and to be on these boards. So, I mean, there's just, there's like, like I said, when you first asked that question, there's like so many layers to. Right. Well, sure. Now I, I, uh, I spent, uh, you know, 20 years of my career as a newspaper columnist in New Jersey. You work in Illinois. Do you think, you know, I, I like, I'm nodding along with everything you're saying over here. Do you think that we're colored a little bit being these two states that aren't exactly known for, uh, you know, good government all the time? <laughs> I don't think it matters because right. the the consequences and incentives are, are part of human nature. Right. And there's and there's no consequence for doing it this way. Just like not to get off topic, but like these bank balances that are, of course, going to happen right. because, they could, because they could spend whatever they want and there's no consequences and it's not their money. You know, speaking about banking and stocks and everything, you know, when you were talking earlier about other things that people can get addicted to, then there, there's no like helpline for, you know, if you're fat, you know, uh, I same with the stock market. I mean, how many, I mean, the stock market is, is sports betting and suits, right? There's sure. no, there's no helplines. Are, are you addicted to trading stocks? You know, when E-Trade runs a commercial, they're not, you know, it's not 1-800, you know, gambler. It Why, why wouldn't it be though? So like, and so I get, so again, this is an easy target. You, can, you know, if you're a politician, you're not going to go after the, the bankers of the stock market. These are the people that pay your salaries that, you know, donate to your campaigns. I guess there's not, maybe that's what we should start doing. Well, we've talked about it. We've talked about it. it it's, it's really, it's really hard. So like, but that, the, the, the concept of an organized minority will always be a disorganized majority is, is how government functions. So like, my my uh, the example I always give is like my parents have a place in Florida and then they got a they got a bill from the association, you know they barely ever go there and they got a bill from the association, and for like ten thousand like, dollars. What the hell is this? And it's like apparently, the a bunch of uh, like re- a real estate companies bought a bunch of units, and then took over the board, and then raised the prices so they could redo everything really quick and then sell all the units. Uh-huh. And I'm like, well, of course they did. They're professionals, right? <laughs> so, like, they know what they're doing. You're just some lady, you know, <laughs> some old man and little lady who go there for two months out of the year, right? And so, like, they have they have vested interests. They have lawyers. They have expertise. They're LeBron James, and you're just some random high school pickup baller, right? Right. And that's the way it works in Springfield too. Is they have the best lobbyists. They have the best. They have the knowledge. They have the money. They have the incentive. Like th- there's like some old saying, I can't remember, like, like no one cares about soybean um, subsidies as much as the soil bean people. Right. So the soil bean subsidies will always be uh, pushed by the soil bean lobbying groups. 
right? And you're just sitting at home writing articles about sports, you know, or betting. Right. So um, you have to get in there uh, the same way. You have to get the press on your side, something I'm sure you know well about, which, uh, you know, I wouldn't hold my breath. Like, I think the best you could do is get them neutral. Right. Maybe. You even have to, the, the unions are in everything in Illinois. They probably are in New York, uh, New Jersey, too. Sure. So, like, you want to get get them on board somehow, although they probably will be opposed to you because the, they do better with the more government programs there are because they're all union employees that right. will be appointed to these. So let me ask you this. Let's if you're you're the CEO of uh, Hooper Betts, right? And you know, you're legal in 36 states and you have, you know, half of those states are breathing down your neck about advertising and you know the the addictions and the you know, you got the federal legislators talking about banning advertising. When you when, when you go in, when you hire your lobbyists, what what are they what would you want them to say? What do you think is the right move? If I work for a sports book, yeah, no, that's easy. Like you, you definitely, you want that stuff because it's, but you make it sure it's a higher burden of entry to your competitors. Okay. So like an entry fee, a licensing fee, isn't that really that bad? If I'm, if I'm DraftKings, you know, a bill, multi-billion dollar company, but it's really bad if um, you and me wanted to start one, we could sure. afford it. So the higher they make it, the less competition they're going to have. And then you could go, okay, we, you know, the, the fees as high as it's going to get. Now let's, let's say that you also have to hire multiple experts in sports gambling addiction on your staff. Right. And they could already probably have someone who's also does two jobs. They just also have this degree or something. And it doesn't really matter to them because they have tons of salaried employees, but adding those two people would, would put us under. And then they could, and even adding these like minimums and stuff or limits and stuff like that. They don't care. They could do that. You know, I don't know the workings obviously of, of every company, but like I, it, I do run a small little site of my own and I could pay someone pretty cheap to add in some like little, little adjustments like, like that to just flick a button. And then it's like, okay, you can only lose this much today. Right. Um, I'm sure they could put it in there and then you negotiate, uh, for your benefit some way. And there's other ways, you know, it doesn't have to be just getting your competition out of the way. It could just be, you know, who knows, like, like maybe making do make it, getting a favor for somebody, but again, they're there forever. You're not right. So they, let's say you even get everything you want and they get nothing. Well, you're going to be, you know, at, at Thanksgiving uh, dinner, while they're working, you know, you're going to be on July 4th, two years from now, while they're changing that. And they just and they just change it later. Right. So. All right. So the, the sports books don't care. The legislators don't care. What what about us? What about the players? What in, in your perfect world? What protections? You know, what what should the you know, what what would it look like if things were done the way that to, that were right, I guess, to lack of a better term. One of the things that annoys me about this is like, this is a group of people who we are like experts at games and strategy. And like, and that's why I hate like seeing like, okay, all of us experts at games and strategy here, here's, here's, here's our, our strategy. Problem gambling is bad. <laughs> like, guys, that's not going to help us win. Right. That's not going to improve our lives at all. That's not going to improve the mental, you know, the, the, the mental health of our friends right? You're just playing right into their hands. So like, I would hope, I don't want to do it. I don't want anything to do with going back to Springfield. I was there long enough. You, you guys are more welcome to it. And, and I'm not persuade, trying to persuade anyone either. I'm just saying like, this is a fun conversation. If we're in the classroom, here's my thoughts on it. Yeah. yeah. But the, yeah. So like this, this group of people you would think would be able to come up with a better strategy. Uh, but like, I was there at the Capitol when we were trying to pass poker and I was a poker player right right before I got the job. And um, the, the Players Poker Alliance was immediately taken over by poker stars. Hmm. And um, uh, a party poker had some money in there. And I talked to the head of it. Uh, what was his name? John Pappas multiple times on the phone. And I knew all the lobbyists in Springfield and was keeping up to date on. And they were all hired by poker stars. And party poker 
and it was and it was just the entrenched casino entrance of a guy named Neil Bloom or Blum, uh, who owned or used to own Bat Rivers. I can't remember his. his he's, he's a multi, he's like six billion dollars or something real right. estate magnet here. He, he he's like a mega donor for the Democrats. Uh, just all of them. Just Google his name. You'll know. Right. He and he. Uh, I'm probably. I might get in trouble by saying this, but right. I don't give a fuck. Um, he's the only reason why it didn't happen, and because he didn't want it. Because he he says no, it's going to drop my drop my money. Now uh, put yourself in the mindset of a politician, a local politician, a state senator, or state rep. You have a casino in your backyard. It employs thousands or hundreds of your neighbors. It gives millions of dollars of taxes to the state. It and they and they've been giving you the max, the max don political donation every year. You're friends with the lobbyists. You're friends with the owner. You go to Sox games with him because he's parts owner of the Sox. Um, you know, on and on and on. And then me and you walk in there and go, hey. You know, the, the players are kind of getting screwed with this limiting and stuff. And, uh, you know, blah, 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 blah. They're like, yeah, cool story, bro. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, but I mean, I, sh- I th- th- that's a little different, actually. But back then with the poker stuff, Poker Stars comes in and goes, we got a list of, uh, you know, 2.7 million Illinoisans say they play poker right here. They all signed it. It's legitimate cigarette uh, signatures. Yeah. Great. I got people who are my neighbors who work at this this place. And they're telling me they're going to lose money and cut jobs and it's going to lower taxes. Mm-hmm. Right. So you don't even have to be uh, like bribed. Like, you know, the, the, the bribery stuff is I saw nothing like that. And and I was on like scoring committees for occasionally, very rarely for like uh, RFPs for, you know, uh, requests for proposals of like software and stuff like that. And there was no shenanigans at all. You don't need it. It's already set up in a way for this kind of, uh, you know, thing to happen. Well, what was your role exactly in Springfield? I was a legislative liaison, which is essentially a, um, a lobbyist for the governor and each, and there's like a, there was like a hundred of us and you get assigned to an agency and the bigger agencies would get more of them. My agency only got one. Um, but like everyone knows everybody, it's very incestuous. Right. And so, like you, you can figure out what's going on in any sector if you, if you're inquisitive enough. So um, right, right now, what do you think is driving this drive against you know sports betting and and you know the, the you know this, this newfound push against it? Is it just like misplaced? Uh, you know, is it misplaced? I guess is the is the question. Well, the, the New York Times article you referenced, like I haven't read it. So like I that's what, that's what started everything. This New York Times article, it was a story about how lobbyists and politicians push sports betting through in all these states by and how the lobbyists would sell a bill of goods and the politicians would buy it hook, line, and sinker. But the problem with the story, from my perspective as a journalist, was that you could have written if I'm you know, if I'm trying to raise money for cancer and I, I'm going to use lobbyists, and lobbyists are going to do the same thing to the same politicians. It doesn't matter what the industry is. They're going to do the same thing. And and the worst part about it, it started off with an anecdote about how these lobbyists for the industry were plying this legislator in Kansas with cigars and, and whiskey, right? Yeah. Well, I looked it up. In Kansas, you're allowed to ply legislators with any food products, and and, and tobacco falls under that. So they were, they were well within like the scope of the law. And you'd be a fucking moron to not ply the legislators with cigars and booze if they like cigars and booze and you were allowed to, you know? So the story to me, it, it destroyed the industry, right? It really, it really came off very harsh on the industry, but they could have written it about any industry, right? And it, the story would have been exactly the same. Ever since then, though, New York has come out, you know, they're trying to ban, New York is trying to like limit advertising. They're trying to put, warning labels like cigarettes you know on every advertisement you know they want you know they want uh uh you know a a very long and drawn out you know if you would need help problem gambling there here's a number they uh, you know at the federal level uh, 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 congressman uh, tonko he wants to ban advertising period much like cigarettes he wants to make it you know the same 
And it just seems horribly misplaced. Again, speaking to your point, we're talking, you know, what, 0.7, 1%, maybe, you know. And, and that's that's people who, listen, Every there are definitely more people losing their shirt on Wall Street than there are in what we do. I, 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 I'm positive of it. Right. Yeah. But you know, it, nobody, nobody's clamoring for that. So I just, I just feel like there's this giant disconnect right now. And you, but, but your points really like, you know, hit the light bulb on for me is that, yeah, you're right. We're all sitting here like, yeah, all right. I guess more warnings are okay. Yeah. I guess we should limit advertising a little bit. Yeah. You know, problem gambling, problem gambling, problem gambling. When really the opposite should be happening. We should be saying this, there is no problem. Right. You've legalized us. Now back the fuck off. Right. Yeah. No, I agree with you. I I, I know I can't help but notice like you kind of hesitated there because it's so hard as a reasonable person to like make the argument that you're making because you also you don't want people to be addicted. It, I know, but I don't want people to get fat. I'm not out there protesting right. McDonald's. I don't want people to lose money in the stock market. I'm not out there boycotting, you know, Chase Bank. I don't want people, you know, to to you know spend a thousand dollars. You know, my son, he's 13 years old. He's he's now become a sneakerhead, right? All right. he wants to do is buy sneakers. He, there's this place, Plato's Closet, like a secondhand store. Every weekend he goes over there and he calls it. Can I spend forty dollars on these? Can I spend eighty dollars? I'm like, dude, what are you doing? You only have two feet, you know. So yeah, but am I boycott? Am I saying that every sneaker commercial needs to come with a warning? Right. Right. And so the list goes on and on and on and on. And again, if you're right, if there were 30 percent of the population had a gambling problem, then we could talk. But you're, every study has shown that the number is low and it's just brand new. And yeah, your point is really well taken. Like, what the fuck are we doing? Like, why? Why are we allowing it to go on like this? There's no voices, you know, not that these voice, not that our voices are going to change anything because, you know, I, there's probably some money to be made here. But yeah, every, you could take almost any. Almost anything that we do as a human society and say, oh, well, that could really be bad for you. We need to slap a warning on it. You know, like how far do, how far does this go? You know, so so the New York Times conclusion of why it was passed in Kansas or whatever was because they kind of bribed them. Well, it was that it, it was sh- it was showing how lobbyists were like really pushing it. But like, that's the job of the fucking lobby. <laughs> right. I, I use that exact same exact analogy, by the way, too. Like, I'm like, well, t- I mean, lobbyists, you know, they're they're. It's kind of ambiguous because they're they're morally ambiguous because their role could be for a child, uh, you know, cancer association. That's right. also a lobbyist. They call themselves advocates at the Capitol. They try to do. They try to pull that game, but they're lot like registered <laughs> lobbyists. Right. There's also there's um, tobacco lobbyists. I mean, you know, like, yeah. you, know, I, you know, obviously, you know, yeah, the job of a lobbyist, whether you're, you know, selling cigarettes, booze, gambling, or cure for cancer, is to get money and 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 and, and legislation good for your cause. The end. Exactly. So, like, why did they pass it? Well, it, I the reason, I mean, I know one of the, I know some of the politicians who passed it here, and the state. States have slightly different budgetary um, uh, consequences, I guess, than the federal government. Because the federal government could just print money and run up debt of $32 trillion. States can't really do that. Yeah, now, balance. they did bail them out during the early COVID bailouts right. for some of these states that were. But generally speaking, local legislators are way more budget conscious than federal because they don't want the whole state to go under. Because they will look like complete asses. So there is a little bit a little bit of consequences, like not much for these guys. Like, like you could just like, like, like how many, like name one bureaucrat who's ever gone to jail. Like right. you can't name one. Like, right. right. And so like, um, that's one of the reasons they actually, they need tax revenue and they don't want to cut any program right? because for the same reasons of the problem gambling thing, it's like, okay, we're going to cut the problem gambling budget. How's that going to play in the New York times? Right. How's that going to play in the Chicago Tribune? Right. It's it's um or the Sun Times probably would go at him more than the Tribune, but um it's it's not gonna play. So don't do it. They're never gonna cut it. So it's like, okay, well, we need more revenue. So they have an incentive there, but the main reason is the entrenched interest groups in those states softened on the idea and thought they could make money on it. That's it. Right. It's just like why California doesn't have gambling. 
in Florida has or has they sometimes they have gambling, sometimes they don't, <laughs> is because the the, uh, the um, what is it Native American? I don't even know the name yeah. the proper name anymore. The Native American associations are so casinos and and poker rooms are so uh, well connected after years of building up these relationships and lobbyists and 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 they give to multiple different. I remember when I was so I worked for a political consulting company briefly before I worked for the, for the state. And I was putting in the checks for this, for the secretary of state, like the donations into the database. Um, God, I can't remember what the database is called, but anyways, and this one name kept coming up over and over again. And I put somebody else in same name, someone we had like 50, 50 politicians and every single one of them got money from this fucking guy. And some of them were like Republicans too, which is pretty rare in Chicago. But, um, so I asked my boss, like, who is this guy? And she's like, I don't know. And uh, so then I go to like some old school politicians and finally ask them, like, do you know who this guy is? And like, oh, yeah, that is the um, like the CFO or C something like that of Comcast, the cable company. So what they do, I'm assuming that this guy can afford to give donations to every politician in Illinois and probably every politician in every state they do business in. Sure is they probably build it into a salary. So so what it, how it works is and I'm not even, like this whole point isn't really about political corruption like the whole reason, like the uh, uh, but anyways is so Comcast gives money, right? Comcast hires a lobbyist, that lobbyist gives money. And then Comcast employees can give money. So like this is another another example of why you put these rules into place and they just work around them. So yeah, the cap might be twenty five hundred for an individual, five thousand for a party, blah 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 blah. And then, by the way, they don't stop with just the individuals; they give it to the the party. Right. So there's like the Cook County Party, the Cook County Democrats, the Senate Democrats, the House Democrats, the Illinois Democrats, right? And then they 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 just they give to all of them. You can give more and more to the bigger the organization. And then and then if it's a presidential run, then you could really get in get into the big box and give it to the to uh, the, the federal, the, you know, the federal candidates and federal parties. So you're, I mean, they're giving tons of money. And then if you piss off the leadership of your state, you're not getting any bills passed. You're not getting any kid committee assignments and committee assignments mean money because you get more for the better committee assignments. You make more money. The legislators don't make like 80 grand. They make 80 grand plus committee assignments and some other things too. So, and plus that's the fun. The whole reason they're there is because they want to be involved. Right. Right? Which is another problem, by the way. I want people there who don't want to be involved, but, but yeah. The, so like the the incentives go on and on to why they're like, yeah, okay, let's do a anti gambling thing. Everyone loves it. You pull it pulls well. The the the, the uh, stakeholders, i.e., the businesses, probably won't be that opposed to it. We'll give we'll give them a little something. Uh, everyone wins. Yeah. You know, it's funny. You were, you were saying that you don't want people there who who uh, want to be there. I, I I think it was I can't remember which novel. It was an Arthur C. Clarke novel. You know, some distant future Earth kind of thing, and uh, you know, it was a utopia. And they would have a lottery for all political positions, right? Every you know, from town council to president of the galaxy, right? They would have a lottery for, it and you'd have to serve your term. And when you were a kid, you were given a test. The only people eliminated who weren't allowed to be in, part, in the lottery were people who showed an aptitude for politics. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Well, he ripped off the Greeks. Because Is that right? That's called sortition. Yeah, that's uh, and I think in Athens or somewhere, uh, you just put your name into a hat and then they pull out the politicians for that time period. And that's um, right. They actually did that. Yeah, it's called sortition. And I think there were there were rules. It, it wasn't political aptitude tests, of course, but I think it was like you might have been a landowner or something like that to get your name in the hat. Some barrier to entry. But, yeah, they used to do they used to do that, um, which which you could easily do now. Oh, of like, course. And but the problem with that you. is because I thought about that. I've advocated for that years ago. And uh, the problem with that is um, the bureaucrats would get a lot more power after I went that went there, because what happens is what's going on. They don't know what's fucking going on now. Right, and right. so if they have to start every two years, four years fresh with some, uh, you know, 
no offense, whatever, like, you know, guy who works at a restaurant or something sure. like that. He might know a lot about restaurants, but probably doesn't know much about how the state works, but it still might be good because they, they might have, um, well, they might have, done, which is probably a good thing. Right. Yeah. But the, I, I imagine the beer, like the people who work there would just, it would just be business as usual. Right. That's and right. They, they, and they would go like, okay, what do we do today? It's like, yeah, well here we're passing this bill. Okay. Cause this is going to help people. And so the, the, and the lobbyists and the employees, like I said, it's very incestuous. Like I party with lobbyists all the fucking time right? because <laughs> they always pay the bills. It's great. Right. You know, they always pay the bar tab and like, no one in, um, uh, uh, you know, and, and they're generally pretty cool. I have a joke, uh, after working there, there's, there's, uh, two requirements to being a lobbyist. Uh, the first one is you have to be an alcoholic. And this, uh, and the second one is you have to be a son of a lobbyist. <laughs> so if you're an alcoholic son of a lobbyist, you're probably yeah. working at a capital right now. <laughs> That's great. And it's even funnier if you actually worked at a capital, cause it's true. Right. That's great. Yeah, the other thing that and we're a little off topic here, but I don't even care, is that you know, I the, doing it the Athens way, the Arthur C. Clarke way. The other benefit, I think, I am of maybe I'm sheltered, right? I don't know, but I'm of the opinion that the majority of Americans are relatively socially liberal, relatively socially liberal, and I'm talking majority, and relatively economically conservative. Okay, you want to be gay and get married, go ahead. You want to smoke weed, go ahead. But I work hard for my money. Let's not let's keep taxes low. That's the majority, I think, of Americans. Show me one politician in America who fits that mold on a national level, who is socially liberal and economically conservative. <laughs> Thomas Mann. Well, there, 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 I mean, how, seriously, how how many are there? There's got to be precious few, right? Not many. Yeah, just the mosh, but he retired. Thomas Massey. Um, I uh, what's his name? Lean Utah, maybe. Not meant your point is true though. I mean, I'm, I'm, um, uh, the, and, and they have no power, right? Uh, they have no power. I mean, the way it's set up now, you know, and, and it's, and it's dripping down to the states too. You have to be a, a, a lunatic on either side of the party to get the nomination. Oh, sure. Yeah. You know, for sure. That, that's because this, so like, I, I call myself a Liberty bro, right? This is what we, we say, we say bro in DFS. So like, yeah, sure. you know, you're, you're a journalist, bro, right? right. You know, you're a, you're a reader, <laughs> you're a reader, bro. Um, and it's a, it's a losing strategy. It's a losing strategy to achieve political power. What you want to do is use your opponent's morals against them. Um, you don't want to say you could do whatever you want. Because right. that's what then they'll do to you. They'll go, hey, but this is you said, you said that uh, we are free to do whatever we want. And then they get their, and then they once they're in power, then they take away yours. Mm. And so it's it's just a it's just a big game. It which is, is why we should be good at it. I, we maybe I I think put the DFS people in charge. <laughs> I, that, I think the whole better. world might collapse if. <laughs> <laughs> but it's right, right now in like the in like presidential politics, I, like you look at like Trump and DeSantis, they can't they, they can't say two words without saying woke. Right. The woke left, the woke left. You know, they're trying to destroy the country. That's the Republicans talking about, you know, uh, this kind of stuff. Meanwhile, Joe Biden, outside of abortion, you're not going to hear him say anything about this stuff. He's just talking money. It's like the roles are reversed, you know, heading into. Like, well, he says MAGA country. all the time, except he says it with a hard R somehow. Magger. Magger. Well, he's no, <laughs> but, but he's not. He's not talking about transgender rights. He's not. He, you know, he he knows that he's got. He's not. Doesn't have to worry about it. He has to worry about the you know the middle and lower middle class people who have been voting Republican the last few elections. You, you know. You know um, so I pay attention to this pretty close. He actually did talk about transgender rights in an interview I just saw about uh, how it's immoral. Now, I mean, we are way off topic here. Yes. But, <laughs> but I, could send, I could send it to you. We, we don't need to talk about it. But right. um, yeah, I think it depends on who you follow. Right. And a lot of the people I follow, uh, they just post constantly everything he says. Um, so he's talked about it. Yeah. Well, anyway, you're right. We are way off topic. So I think in the end, so I guess we should put a bow on it here a little bit. I think in the end, 
that there is like this little bit, I think we're in like a little bit of a, of a hysteria stage when it comes to all of this, you know, and I think it's going to get worse before people like find something else to be hysterical about. I, I agree. I, and, and unfortunately I'm what was called black pilled on this. I'm not optimistic and we're able to do anything because we are not only a minority, we're a disorganized minority. Right. Um, and so they are going to win. They already have basically won. Um, in some ways, the unregulated market, certainly back in the early 2000s for sports betting, was way better. The days of net teller, what a, what a beautiful, you know, uh, uh, economy that was. Um, and so, um, you know, we got the regulation and, um, I don't think it's going to change. I do think I, I hope someone tries. And like what I would suggest again is like, don't focus, focus on, on problem gambling. There's going to be plenty of people to focus on problem gambling. Use it to your advantage to help your constituency, which hopefully is actually players. Right. Um, and then you could like try like a, a, a like a, a single state, try to get a real foothold in there. And like, you're going to have to hire some lobbyists to like 10 grand a session probably maybe with inflation now, 15 grand a session and um, get the press on your side or neutral. And, well, and, and what, what, what would you like to see? I guess. I mean, I'm going back to that question. If, if, if that was you, what would you want to see? How, what, what would help us? I would, well, so again, like being a Liberty bro, like this is hard for me to say, cause I don't think I should say how someone should run their business in any fashion, but I don't think of them as a hot dog stand in a private, you know, the bookstore across the street. Right. They're a public private partnership. And so if we're doing this, like we're saying that that's the moral thing here, then yeah, we should, we should um, go like as far as you can for negotiations. You always want like the asymmetrical aspect of a negotiation to be on your side. So you want to push the extremes. So like no limiting, um, uh, uh, you know, you could put um, uh, like like bonuses don't have to have some giant pass through, you know, like, but they will get around these things. I'd have to think about more more demands, um, you know, like something big, basically. And yeah. What, like, in the like the ta like the taxes and profits. How do, how are they getting paid out? Maybe just have some of that go back to players. Right. Like just just add, ask for an insane thing that's never going to happen, you know, and then negotiate yourself down. They they do kind. Of, they, I mean, you could at least get on the committees and stuff like that. Like you could you could uh, testify. Anyone can because it's, right. it's open to the public. But like you could get meetings, and if you and you and you don't want to waste your fifteen grand for lobbyists, you got to hire a good one. So you kind of have someone has to know the the state you're in. But yeah, I would ask for like, like no bannings, you know, no. And then, and then if they're like, oh, well, we want to uh, do this problem gambling initiative, like, okay, well then we also want a portion of that to go back to, to, to just gamblers in general or something like that. Um, if they want to take money and advertise, uh, and, and like, I think the advertisements and stuff like that, it's just a jobs program. Like the, the, the entire thing is a jobs program, really. Like everyone there who works there knows someone w one way or another. It, it, I'm, I worked with this girl for years and I'm like, no, she just got the job. You know, some people get the jobs here. And finally, eventually she cracked and told me, no, I, my dad knows so-and-so. I'm like, I fucking knew it. Everybody here got, has a job from somebody. And so it's just a big it's just a big jobs program. So like now they can have ads, right? And then they have to buy ads with the newspapers and the local news stations. They have to hire somebody to run the program for like, okay, well, what are we going to put on these ads and stuff like that? They have to, uh, you know, appropriate funds for this program. Um, yeah. I, I, I probably, uh, if I thought about it for a couple days, I have a better answer for specific demands that I think would help players. 
but again, like, I don't think I'm going to be involved in it anyway. <laughs> so like who, but whoever is, whoever does maybe try to take, take it up. That would be a couple of things I would think of is like what percentage of this money is going to taxes and what percentage is going, put that back into lower lines. Right. Lower the VIG. Duh. There, there's one. Why did I not think of that? Like the VIG yeah, should be less. I would actually, and something I would advocate for that helps players and, and the, and the DFS sites is this would have to be at the federal level. Cause I think it's federal legislation is removal of the requirement of the sites to have um, the, the specific number of opponents you're going to have in a, a GPP. Mm-hmm. And then they can't change it because in poker, Whoever signs up, signs up. So if for some reason it's a super busy day and everyone wants to play poker on a Sunday, those pools, you know, I don't know what they are now, but back in the day, they'd get up to $200,000, a million dollars sometimes because so many people would sign up where the DFS sites have to guess at how many people want to sign up because they don't want to lose any money, but they don't want to pay the overlay. And so we, as players, we would lose out on overlay. But I think those days are kind of. They're done they're kind of done anyways. Some guys who are really dedicated could still do it, but I think the benefit we would get from some days when it would just be so big, it would kind of like be like a lottery ticket. Although that's not like a good analogy because the lottery is even a bigger, bigger scam. Oh, right. can I, can, let me mention this before, because we talked about this on uh, the show uh, scratch off tickets. The worst. Well, my, so I did mention on, on the show that in Illinois, they're required to show which tickets have been won. Right. And one of my, my buddies in my discord looked into Illinois and he's, he's, you know, a stats economics guy. And uh, he goes, this one, we could actually win 14% money on if we go buy all the tickets right now. And so we're like, oh, shit, should we do that? Right. Because you, it's, it's, it's like 1.7 million to do it, to get them all. Right. And the EV is like 14%. Um, worst case scenario, but you don't need 1.7 million because you get uh min cashes a lot, you get right. a lot of money back as you're going through the tickets, and so you could probably do it for a couple hundred thousand. And what you're trying to do is spike an upside of hitting that big payday in the big one before you're like the, the before the odds dictate that you probably should, right. Um, and then you could make 25, 50% or more on your money. Um, so you actually can still beat these things and people do it. You, there's articles out there. You guys might even add one there. There's, there's groups that, that, that still do it. So you could beat, you can beat them, but the, but anyways, the idea with DFS is, you know, it is a skill game and also the, the idea that someone could be like, what, there's a $10 million prize pool in DFS this football Sunday. Right. Throw 10, 15 bucks in there, make a lineup. Like it's fun. It's entertaining too. And so like maybe that could spark, this is my idea is like, maybe it could spark another 2015 DFS exciting boom of people mm-hmm. getting, getting into it. Like po- like the poker days or something like that. So like that, that's another thing I'd be completely down, down with for like the players advocacy group. Um, but usually what happens is they get overtaken because they're better at it than you. Right. <laughs> and that's what happens with the Pareto principle in every aspect of life is the top 20% are the ones who produce all the results. Going back to the lottery for a second, I just wrote about like, you know, uh, on this topic, how, you know, they're going after, you know, the legislature is going after sports betting advertising, lottery advertising. They spend about $600 million a year, the States on lottery advertising. You only have to be 18 to play. They use cartoon characters to advertise it. And do you, you hear one politician ever saying, hey, we need to stop this lottery business? You yeah. Know, no, because it's a cash cow for the states, you know? Yeah. This is the Gelman amnesia effect. Are you familiar with the Gelman no, I, amnesia effect? Yeah. Where it's uh, Michael Crichton, the writer, right. uh, uh, had this analogy based off the scientist. Uh, I can't remember his name. His last name's Gelman. And um, – it's it's when he's he was reading the newspaper and he was reading an article that he's an expert on and they and he you know he went to Harvard and and he's an expert on it and they got it backwards he called it like the 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 roads make the rain wet they got it so far backwards then he turned the page and it was on something he doesn't know about something about like the Middle East and he just reads the New York Times next page like it's like it's the Bible all of a sudden mm. and he goes the only explanation for this is amnesia. 
Because why mm-hmm. would I believe this when I know for sure they got this horribly wrong? Right. And it's another example. It's like, how how can you guys have the righteous indignation of sport, gambling's bad when you've been running this crooked lottery you know, scheme, monopoly, for 20, 30, 40 years, whenever it started? Yep. Like it makes – it, 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 it makes no sense, but we just go, okay, turn the page. It's all, it's all good. That's very true. Yeah. I mean that, that, that effect also, I mean, I remember when, uh, uh, you know, Ethan gate happened and I remember the, you know, the newspapers is all over it, the scandal, the scandal. I'm like, all right, it's not you know, like they're getting everything wrong about it, you know? And I was like, man, so if they're getting this wrong, like, how, right. How am I supposed to trust them now on, you know, the, the goings on in Iraq? Right. You know, like, yeah. It's, you know, that's a great point. Right. All right. I don't know who's supposed to end this. This is your show, but it was my interview, so I'm not sure what to do. Here. <laughs> we, could, we could we could just end it. I I I really don't think I have any any other interesting any ideas. Do, do you have any more questions? Or I don't good? think so. No, I think I'm, I think I'm definitely. This is gonna, I'm going to call make this a column, and you know you're going to be the the featured star here in this one because I mean it just you're it it's almost like I've been in a dark room like we all are, and you've like turned the light bulb on. Like we're, the 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 they're, the government is trying to like tackle a problem that doesn't really exist. When they if they really want to help the people playing the games, there's a million other things they could be doing. For sure, yeah, for sure, yeah. And, and let me, let me just stress too, like just like like I said for the like the player angle, it's like these guys. A lot of these guys have a lot of like mental baggage. Um, you know, our buddy uh, uh, Ricky D said, I, I can't remember what how, what the exact word he says, but like basically our bro- brains were broken after playing poker. And and I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's pretty much true. That it really was like, I can't even like look at a deck of cards anymore, you know? Mm-hmm. And so like, like it's, it's like you're, you're telling all these people they're like, they're scoundrels, you know, they're, 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 t- they're taking advantage of other people as opposed to just competing in a, you know, voluntary competition. Well, again, what about like, the stock market? When I buy a stock at twenty and sell it at forty, somebody's losing on the other end of the deal. Sure, right, yeah, but and and and, and I will say that's way worse because the stock market isn't known for entertainment. Right. Clearly, sports betting is you get right is entertainment and and DFS and poker. The vast majority of people who play get great uh, enjoyment out of it, right. and just because you don't. Doesn't you know? Doesn't mean that they shouldn't happen. Like I did, I was on Reddit years ago looking up like these um, keto shakes things. You know, during the keto boom, and uh, and I, and like someone posted like, uh, "Is there any pre-made shakes?" Because that's what I was looking for a pre-made one. I don't want to make them. And this guy's like, "You guys are idiots. You could buy this from here and this from here and make your own shakes and save eighteen cents." <laughs> and it's like, pal, I don't care about the eighteen cents. I want it easy and be done for the day. And I think that's what happens with a lot of these gamblers is they go, oh, my God, they don't understand. They're losing 2% EV on this sports bet. It's like, pal, I don't give a shit. Right. I, my buddies are over. We're drinking beers on the big screen. We're going to B-dubs right. or something. Right. We don't. We don't. And he's like, you fool. How could you spend that two cents equity like that? We need the state to get involved. And just just this fallacy of pass a bill. Right. The problem. Pass a bill, you know, rub your hands together. That's all that, and like, when does that ever happen? Right. When right. it's like, and someone went in our Discord and started like kind of going at me after that show, like, bro, you don't know what you're doing. It's just common sense reform. It's like, whenever any someone puts common sense in front of something, you right. could be f- sure they're full of shit, brainwashed right. people. <laughs> And you could you could just easily dismiss them and don't engage with it. Well, common sense just to me is just the definition of what I happen to believe. <laughs> right, right. But like, if you think there's common sense at the Capitol, like I got yeah. I got a bridge to sell you. Sure, sure. And you know the stock market analogy again is it's the the entertainment value in sports betting. Right, there's no entertainment value in the stock. You know, it's not like I'm buying McDonald's stock and then going to the local one and cheering on the the employees sell more burgers. You know, like it's not how it works. It's it's exa- sports betting is exactly like going to a movie, but yet someone, some percentage of people are going to get a share of the tickets, right? The ticket profit, right? No one's going to. It makes the movie that much more awesome because I wasn't getting anything to begin with. Right. It's <laughs> a great point. That's sports betting. Yep. Right and DFS. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's a bunch. It's a crock of shit. There it is. Yeah. 
right. All right. Well, we did an hour. Lineups. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> good point. All right. Stick around. I'm going to end the recording, and then we'll say our goodbyes. Yeah. So thanks for listening, people. <laughs>